go ahead and move on to uh, chapter 10. We'll be talking about some uh, visual search patterns. Applying these patterns is the responsibility of the mission observer slash mission pilot, but you should at least be aware of the type of pattern you're going to be flying, and uh, that'll help you be prepared to adjust your scan accordingly. So the root search, uh, basically, uh, that's probably the very first search that's going to be done. Somebody is flying from point A to point B, uh, filed a flight plan. We know what their route is. Uh, they disappear. So uh, there's a, uh, a high probability that he is, uh, we can assume that he is flying his route and, uh, and the mishap occurred along that route. So route search, uh, initially, uh, you start uh, offsetting half of your desired track spacing. So we said track spacing is about half a, a mile. And so we would offset about a quarter mile from the planned route of the uh, target aircraft. And uh, we would go from the uh, departure all the way to the uh, destination, uh, not seeing anything. Then we'd go back and repeat it this way. And if we still didn't see anything, uh, then we would go whatever your track spacing is, which is a half mile. So we would go ahead and repeat it a half mile uh, like this and so forth, a uh, bigger and bigger uh, area as we, uh, as we cover it there. So your, your assumption is uh, that the aircraft crashed on or near its intended track or filed flight plan, something that's done as a first attempt. And uh, something like this, I would fly it at 1,000 feet if conditions allowed. If there were some reasons, maybe uh, because of airspace or some other uh, noise considerations, then uh, you could fly it up to about 2,000 AGL, AGL meaning above ground level. So that's the route search. Now the next one is the parallel track search. The parallel track search is the search that we use when we're searching inside a grid. We talked earlier about the CAP grid system. And if you're going to search a grid that has relatively flat terrain, where you don't have a lot of ups and downs, and canyons and mountains, then you set up a very methodical pattern uh, as is shown here. Again, if our track spacing was one half mile and this was our grid, we would start half of a half, of a half mile, a quarter mile, from the uh, edge of the grid and uh, search. Now there's two things you can talk about as far as staying within the grid. If this is your grid and there's nobody around you on the other sides of the grid anywhere, we haven't assigned somebody to fly in that grid, uh, what you would actually do is start from outside the grid, like where my uh, uh, cursor is there, fly into the grid, fly all the way uh, through the grid outside, uh, and then do a, a turn and come back in like this. And that way you cover the entire grid. You don't have this area here uh, where you're missing uh, some coverage there. So that, that's the ideal. And uh, the AOBDs, as much as possible, don't try to have adjacent grids uh, being searched simultaneously so that you do have the latitude to do that. As the mission pilot, as I come into the grid, I'll, I'll make a radio call or an intercom call uh, in grid. And that way everybody knows to go to work, go to work, be checking things. And then as I leave the grid, I, I call out of grid. And what that does is now allows you as the scanner to take a break, rest your eyeballs, uh, take a sip of water, get caught up on your notes, those kind of things. Uh, and then I'll turn the airplane around using about 25 degrees of bank. Uh, it will give me about a half mile turn uh, diameter and uh, come back down the other way. So the parallel track search, which is also uh, sometimes called the grid search, that's used to search uh, relatively flat terrain, and uh, usually uh, it's a sector that uh, you search. And we could orient it uh, either east-west or north-south. We could do the same thing north-south. And depending on the lighting or depending on uh, where how it was searched last time, uh, that would impact the way that we want to do it. Normally it is either on cardinal uh, headings true north or uh, true east because it aligns with the grid which is printed on the map. So uh, we use this parallel track search commonly when we have a large, fairly level area. We don't really know where the target is, so now we're expanding and searching greater areas. And uh, I didn't mention it, but I'll go back to it. The procedure is actually as we come in, the first thing we'll do is identify the four corners of the grid. So we'll fly this here, and we'll fly this maybe 2,000, 2,500 feet 
look for landmarks, get an assessment of what the train looks like, decide if your track spacing that you planned is going to be adequate or you need to adjust it. Uh, and then after we've uh, found the four corners, then we'll go ahead and start the actual uh, grid search itself. As I said, with half mile spacing in a standard uh, quarter grid, it takes about two and a half hours to do it right. And we, we normally fly these uh, at, a, at 80 knot as a technique. If you are uh, assigned a grid search, it's a good idea to print out uh, what that grid looks like and in particular, uh, what the four lines that define the grid are, the northern latitude, southern latitude, uh, western longitude, and eastern longitude. Uh, there's other uh, techniques, uh, other aids you can use, like that map I showed you in four flight that actually showed where the grids were. And there's some other software, uh, uh, electronic flight bag software called WingX, uh, that's similar. I've not used these resources, but I think they will also print out if you give it a grid number it will show you what the uh, grid actually looks like there. Okay, uh, we're talking about the creeping line search. Uh, if you feel pretty confident, or the incident commander and the AOBD feel pretty confident uh, knowing that uh, aircraft was on a certain track, either following its route or uh, like, like we saw earlier, a lot of crashes occur right after takeoff. So uh, even checking the extended center line of the runway, uh, out for several miles, or uh, the approach end of the runway. If somebody uh, we know was lost uh, near the near the terminal part of the flight, so we use a creeping line search, and basically this is the line, and we're going to be flying perpendicular to the line. So we use our spacing of uh, S half mile, half mile, and like this, called a creeping line search. Uh, you might also do this along an airway, which is basically a highway in the sky, call them airways, and again, a creeping line search, uh, particularly if somebody filed a, uh, a flight plan on an airway, uh, that would concentrate your efforts on that particular uh, portion of the flight. I'll let you go ahead and read the slide. Now, sometimes uh, rather than concentrating on a certain flight path, the assumed flight path where the uh, target might be, we know fairly close to where it is. And when, when might we know that? We might know that if we're doing a ELT search, electronic locator transmitter. So uh, we can use some equipment in the airplane to uh, figure out uh, where, the, uh, where the airplane is, or we might have even gotten coordinates from a PLB. So we have some coordinates uh, and we want to search for that area. A way to do that is one of these point-based searches called expanding square. So uh, basically you start at your point and whatever your S is, whatever your, your search range is, you would fly for that length of time. So a half mile, uh, you'd go a half mile south, let's say initially, and then you'd go a half mile to the east. And then you would double that and instead of a half mile, you'd go two times a half or one mile and one mile. And then a mile and a half, mile and a half, two miles, two miles. Are you starting to see a pattern here? Basically, uh, what do you do? Whatever your spacing is, you'll fly two legs of that spacing, and then you will add that spacing to your next two legs. If you think about it, half mile, half mile, one mile, one mile. Or rather than doing it on distance, if you want to do something really quick just at the drop of a hat, you can use time. And rather than uh, distance, when we're flying 80 miles an hour or 80 knots, depending on the true airspeed, we're probably doing around 90 knots over the ground, which is a mile and a half a minute. So if you take 30, 30 seconds, let's say that's an easy number to work with, uh, fly 30 seconds south, 30 seconds to the east, one minute to the north, one minute to the west, a minute and a half to the south, minute and a half uh, to the east, two minutes, two minutes. See the trend there? So that's uh, that's a way to, to do that. Now that, if you fly that kind of a pattern, if there's any wind, that wind will bias you and move you off. So you might want to compensate for the wind somewhat, but uh, depending on how large your pattern is, you'll eventually cover the area uh, anyway. If you are unsuccessful uh, orienting north-south, uh, what you can do is repeat the whole thing, but uh, oriented uh, 45 degrees uh, one way or the other. And so now you'll be looking at a different uh, look angle. 
And in fact, you might try uh, doing the other way, going this way, clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So uh, that's uh, the expanding square. It's really good uh, for searching a, a point area if you're fairly certain it's in that area somewhere. Another place you might use it is a hiker. You know, there's a hiker around there somewhere. This would be a good pattern to, uh, to use for that. Used for a smaller area. Uh, there's another point-based uh, search pattern, and that is called the uh, sector. It's not as complicated as it looks. Basically, uh, what you're doing is flying a bunch of isosceles triangles. So uh, essentially, uh, you would come at your uh, the center point, the, the point where you're concentrating your efforts. Uh, you go out one times your search range. So about a half mile. Here you would turn 120 degrees, and you'd go again a half mile, turn 120 degrees, aim right back at your uh, point. You continue through there, turn 120 degrees, 120 degrees, and it's just a repetitive thing, and eventually you'll work your way all the way around the, the entire uh, operation. So that's called a sector search. Fortunately, uh, the expanding square, the sector, the grid line search, those are all in our electronic flight bag uh, software like ForeFlight. So uh, we can fly those patterns quite accurately uh, using that, uh, that particular equipment. So we have two point-based. Uh, we've got the expanding square and, uh, and we have the sector search. Okay, what are we doing? We're in the mountains. We're in the mountains, we use a uh, technique called the sector or the uh, contour search. And you can see on the uh, right hand side, uh, there's a ridge there. What we'll do initially is fly over top of the ridge uh, and scan the very top of the ridge. Uh, and the length we go will depend on uh, how long that ridge runs. Uh, we may have to break it up because we would want to be searching in our particular grid. So we wouldn't want to be searching outside the grid or there may be some other constraints uh, such as terrain or weather. Uh, in any case, uh, we initially fly uh, over top of the ridge line, and then we'll drop down. Uh, typically, we'll drop down 500 feet on each pass. So we'll drop down 500 and then circle the, uh, that ridge on both sides at five, 500 feet below our initial uh, altitude. And we'll use the, uh, the barometric altimeter in the airplane for that. Uh, and then beat it another 500 feet and so forth. The uh, terrain was uh, fairly rough, a lot of uh, foliage in there. Uh, we'll use uh, a lesser amount, uh, 250 feet, as the uh, altitude between each, uh, each pass there. So obviously it's used in the mountains. Uh, you wouldn't use it inside a canyon. Uh, we do something different there, uh, going down a canyon or a steep valley, but uh, more for a well-defined uh, ridge or a, a mountain peak. It doesn't have to be a ridge. It can just be a mountain peak, and you just circle that, uh, that mountain at various altitudes as you continue around it there. Uh, we're always going to start at the highest altitude. Uh, you, we want to make sure that we never get ourselves in a blind canyon or a place where we can't turn around. So we want to, That's why we do that first assessment above the terrain, scoping it out and making sure that uh, we're not going to get trapped uh, somewhere where the hill is climbing faster than our airplane can climb. Okay, so those are the uh, search patterns. So we talked about the, uh, the route search, or so, sometimes called track crawl, uh, the parallel track or grid aligned. Another term for that is also a sweep search. That's on uh, flat terrain and uh, usually in a, uh, a grid type of scenario. Creeping line, where you're, uh, you're following the route, uh, checking out more thoroughly along the route. We have two point-based uh, search patterns, the expanding square and the sector, and then finally in mountainous terrain, the contour search.